Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 and the third part of this experiment where we're taking a look at what would happen if a tier 22 English team had unlimited money. Uh, so we're trying to see if they're going to win the Premier League or the Champions League. It is going to take a while to get there. Um, I've been simming ahead. It does mean the videos aren't coming out quite on schedule just because it takes so long to go forward. There's about 120,000 players in this database. Um, but I am removing the leagues as I go so it will get quicker and quicker. And today we're going to go forward five more years. So they're in tier 18 at the moment. Um, so they should, with a bit of luck, end up reaching tier 13 by the end of today's episode. And then next time I'm hoping to go 10 years ahead, which would get them um, maybe not quite 10 years ahead. depends how quickly they get promoted. But basically I want to get to the point where they're entering the non traditional non-league kind of structure of the game and possibly even League 2. That's kind of where I want to go to in the next part. So do drop a like on the video if you're still enjoying this series and want to see more parts from it. Um, I also want to say a massive thank you to everybody who's helped me reach 17,000 subscribers. Um, it has happened so quickly since the last one of these we've gained 500 new subscribers so thank you to each and every one of you who did hit that sub button and if you haven't make sure you do I've got that 20k goal I keep talking about let's try and hit that as soon as possible but thanks again for all your support there were a few questions from the last episode uh, the main one seemed to be about Daniel Adji who you might remember me mentioning people asked if he's a hashtag United player he's actually not I don't believe because he has an in-game picture I don't believe that's a Daniel Adji from hashtag United um, but I know that the hashtag United players are in the game so if he was a regen that would probably be the case but I don't think it is I think it's just a player that has moved on from another club another question was about the uh, National League badges appearing below the league information um, so I'm not sure kind of where that was popping up but I know that it had like the Danish badge beneath there it is so they've got the uh, I think that's the Dan Danish um, national icon ahead of the mid Sussex Football League Division 4 uh, title. The reason for that is just so that they don't have individual graphics, so I think the game is auto-filling them just perhaps a little bit badly. Um, another question was about the wages for Fairwalk, which is a good point because they are losing hundreds of millions of pounds. So if we take a look at their um, contract information, you can see that these players are on pretty high wages. Uh, that's the value, where's the wages? There they are, 50, what, 55 grand a week for Paddy Madden. If you want to know where the money is going, it's going to players like Paddy Madden, who's moved from Fleetwood Town, where he was playing every game in the championship, down to Fairwap in tier 18, 19. It's ridiculous, uh, the amount of money they're putting in wages. So they are going to run out of money. They might even run out of money before they hit League 2. That is going to happen. Uh, the other question was about the schedule of the senior squad. Um, and they are winning every game, but they're not winning them by big margins. This is 2, 3, 4, maybe 5 nil, 5 1. Um, but they're not winning it 20 nil, which when if you've got a team of players who are in the championship and they have 19 leagues down, they should be winning a lot more than they are. Um, so I'm not sure why this happens. I think it is. Um, an almost balance put in the game by football manager. I think they've tried to make it so that you can't just stack out a team with the best players and win every game by default 20 nil. Football is more surprising than that. Small teams lose to big t uh, beat big teams all the time. Um, and also it's not often that you see a team win every match in the league 20 nil because the players get bored and you play to 2-3 nil and then you get lazy and you pass the ball around and you don't finish everything. Um, so I think it's just a dose of realism in the game and that this probably is what would actually happen in real life. So those were the questions from last time. Without chatting on too much more, we're going to go forward five years now and have a look at how they've done, what translates they've made, finances, infrastructure, all that good stuff. So do drop that like button and let's go ahead. Well, we are now five years into the future. When we left off last time, this was how they finished that season. They did win six cup competitions in one year. The Mains Challenge Cup, the Mid-Sussex Senior Cup, the Stratford Challenge Cup, the Stubbins Challenge Cup, the Mid-Sussex Junior Cup. Uh, so they won the Junior and the Senior Cup and they won the Somerville Challenge Cup. They won six cup competitions and the league doing the septuple that season, um, which is absolutely unbelievable, while also doing it all completely unbeaten in competitive games. What a season for Fair Warp. Uh, they did get promoted 
up into the next tier, which is the Mid-Sussex Football League Division 4. Still a few to go. Uh, Pre-season went all right. They lost to Wigan, but the uh, actual season went off brilliantly. And once again, four cup titles this time alongside the league. So five more trophies into the cabinet there, winning uh, a lot of games without conceding. They conceded one goal the entire competitive season. And that was to Wisdom Sports in the 81st minute when they were already 4 it up. Um, they nearly went an entire season, winning every game without conceding a goal. That is exceptional. Uh, the following season, they got up into Division 3 of the Mid-Sussex Football League. Uh, conceded a few more goals here. Um, two, three, four. But they got into four more cup finals and they won a lot of them. So that's five more trophies in the cabinet and then going into the 24-25 season now up to Mid Sussex Football League Division 2 and you can see uh, a lot of wins here an 8-0 over Ashurst uh, with four goals for Niall Ennis um, a lot of cup competitions they're playing so many matches across the season here um, and in the end they ended up winning four more cup competitions and that to the league title that makes five more trophies every year 25-26 uh, season uh, Mid-Sussex Football League Division 1 now, so we're going to get into a different league after this. Um, but you can see still a lot of cup competitions, and at the end they won all four of them. Five more trophies, that's 20 trophies, um, or actually no, it's 22 trophies in the last four years. So that is a lot of trophies. Uh, they did lose actually, they lost in a cup semi-final, I missed that, I didn't even look at that. They lost on penalties to Stedham United in the Sussex Intermediate Cup semi-final their first competitive defeat for many many years so a shock to the system there but they did still win five trophies it's not the end of the world um taking on some more difficult teams in pre-season but they lost all of them except for the one against coventry city so not a good start there but their league now they're in the Fo mid sussex football league championship i assume there's a premiership to come um but you can see that they have managed to win every single game right the way through to the end of the season with four more titles, including that Sussex Intermediate Cup. Uh, they did beat Icklesome Casuals, uh, what a name for a club. 5-0 um, there to take that title, which means if we look at their competition history, it goes down quite some way. A lot of league titles down there, uh, the most highly reputable one, or is that the right way to say that there? The most reputable Cup is the Tester Challenge Cup, which they have won twice. The Parsons Challenge Cup, they've won three of them. All of these cups ranked a lot higher up than their league divisions, which are down here, um, and actually in reverse order. I'm pretty sure this ranks in terms of reputation, so maybe the reputation for some of these leagues a little bit off. Um, but Fair Warp doing very, very well. If we look at their transfer um, history, uh, if I can find that, transfers would be the right place to look. You can see last season they did spend £110,000 bringing in Joshua Meyer from Reading, another striker. They love signing strikers. He got 12 goals in nine league games. A very good investment there if you're trying to win another league title. Um, season before that, they spent 400 k That's a lot of money. Matthew Williamson costing nearly 350 k from Fleetwood. Again, another striker. And he only got 5 in 12, so not a great investment there. 3-3 three and three the year before when he did sign... Um, but still, not doing that well, given how much they splashed out on it at this stage. Um, not too many transfers the year before that. 275k on David Sutton from Rotherham the year before. Um, and if we look at his career stats, he joined them. Uh, didn't particularly get that many goals. He does play on the right of midfield, and then he left for just 75k. So they took a 200k hit on him um, in losing him. So... Not the best transfer business, but you can see they're rising up the table here. They're still at the Fair Warp Recreation Ground. Um, if we look at their general information, um, average season ticket price still just 65 quid, not too bad. They're still reckoned as rich, and their facilities, you can say, are pretty good facilities for a team in the division that they're in. I do want to have a look at those wages again, because I think that's a really interesting mark of how much money they're spending it and it looks like the wages have come down they had players on 55 grand don't forget um 29 now the highest they've got so they must have originally split uh, splashed out some big name players they've now managed to scale that back um but Kaziah Sterling definitely becoming a club legend he got 17 in 21 20 and 24 in all competitions uh last season after doing well in the seasons before that as well he's now at 102 league goals in 232 games and if we do 
go back to the club and look at their best 11 overall. You can see that Keziah Sterling is at the top. Daniel Adji on the left flank, 29 and 43 for him. But Sterling leading the way with 97 in 143. However, Charlie Brown, 81 in 112. That is a better goal to game ratio. And if we have a look at his career stats, you can see he joined on a free five years ago and has been banging in the goals ever since then. Um, so he's doing well. Uh, Harrison Fulks is their current goalkeeper, I believe, and he's keeping a lot of clean sheets, 16, 15. Um, he doesn't concede many. In fact, he's only conceded two league goals for quite a while, which means that he's only conceded 37 league goals in 55 league games in his entire career. That is a great record. Their right back's got 28 goals in 115 games. I think any defender would murder to have that kind of record. And if we look at the managers, it is still Tim Tilly in charge with 10 league titles and 38 cup competitions in just under 10 years. What kind of manager wouldn't love to have a record like that? Uh, we can have a quick look at their records. Highest transfer fee paid is here. Um, players, top scorer there. Um, but total transfer spending here, you can see the full amount being spent out. Uh, players, most goals there. Most goals are actually Hope with 25 a few years ago. Most league goals there, 17 for Kasai Sterling. And most assists, 28 for David Sutton. That is a fantastic return. He's now on loan at Notts County from QPR. He's a player we looked at before who left for a 200k loss, but he seemed to get an awful lot of assists there. Um, so I think that will probably be it for this part of the experiment. Of course, these will be a little bit short because they're a little bit repetitive at the moment, but hopefully next time we're going to go 10 years into the future. You can see how slow the game is loading right now. This is the bane of my life. It's making it hard to record anything else, but we are going to go 10 years into the future next time. We're going to get them to hopefully League 2, possibly the conference kind of leagues, um, but either way, they will be promoted an awful long way. I'm not going to put any more money into the club. If they run out, they run out. I'm pretty sure they'll make it there regardless of any additional money. Um, if the game doesn't crash right now, we will take a look at their finances. But I can tell you for free, there's about £300 million in there. Um, so they've spent an awful lot. We can actually have a look now that it's finally loaded. That's how long it takes to load these pages, though. It's ridiculous. Uh, and you can see, yep, £363 million still in the bank. They spent a good 550 million but i imagine a lot of that is taxes wages and other um fees that go out as a result their facilities as well 10 10 4 2 1 um so that's it for this episode do drop a like on the video if you'd like to see that 10 year part coming up next make sure to subscribe if you haven't already do us a massive favor and help support the channel by hitting that subscribe button but until next time see ya